How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run, part four. The way that the eccentrics are attached to the crankshaft is a very poor method for an engine of this size and power. I show the re-threading of the holes in the second collar, but this is not going to be successful as the collars are weak. I show the repacking of the low pressure cylinder gland and also the filing of the valve forks to clear the expansion links. When I make these videos, I seldom think about things like camera angles. Basically, I'm doing the job. So some of the camera angles are a little bit suspicious. Here, for instance, the image is too far to the left because I was watching what I was doing, not looking at the camera viewfinder for a change. What I'm doing is threading the second collar 6BA to take grub screws instead of the slot-headed screws. As I'm doing this particular job, I realise how weak these collars are really going to be. There's already evidence of a previous incarnation of threading which went wrong. Mounting the eccentrics in this manner is not going to be successful. OK if it's just going to sit in a glass case, but this engine needs to run and drive a model bolt. It's top tip time. I'm about to remove the flywheel and I'm pleased to say this fits on and off of the crankshaft with no problems whatsoever, as I cleaned off all the burrs previously. A much better idea is to put the flywheel in the position that I want it to be, then using a scriber through the screw hole, make a mark on the crankshaft, and then drill a detent, which is a very shallow drilled hole on the crankshaft itself. And then when you fit the 2BA grub screw through the flywheel and tighten it up into the detent, it cannot possibly burr the crankshaft, and it will hold it in place far better. Whilst on the subject of grub screws, here are the two 6BA grub screws I'm going to use to hold the eccentrics to the crankshaft via the very feeble collar around the eccentrics. As the collar is too thin and the grub screws have a bit sticking out of the end, what I need to do is flatten them off because I need every thread possible. For this, I'm using the very cheap grinder which cost me £25 from a local DIY outlet called B&Q and almost immediately it removes the end part of the grub screw, just what I need. In this clip, using a small needle file, I am removing the burrs that were created by the tapping process. And now the eccentric sheaves slide on and off the crankshaft very easily. Just about everything that could be tight on this engine is tight including the drag links on the expansion link. They are really stiff and they don't need to be. The bolt is lock nutted in place, it's not going anywhere, there are plenty of washers in between the parts, so you can afford a little bit of movement here. A small amount of what is known as end float. Now this part, the expansion link mechanism, moves far easier than it did previously. This is the low pressure end of the engine, and I'm removing the bolt through the centre of the die block. Here's the die block in the expansion link, and I will put this in a safe place so I don't lose it. Even the die block is quite a tight fit in the expansion link, but I don't need to do anything about that because it will wear in in the fullness of time. What I'm doing here is removing the two nuts that hold the gland cover in place on the steam chest of the low pressure cylinder. I was surprised to find that this gland wasn't packed with anything but fresh air. I found this hard to believe, so I used my piece of welding wire and poked about in the hole, and no, there's nothing in there. This is how I'm packing the gland. I'm using Teflon coated yarn, and I'm wrapping it around the valve spindle, and then very carefully using a screwdriver, I push it into the gland. Here, I've put a little bit too much in. But this is not a problem, I simply pulled some out and cut it off with a pair of side cutters. Where do I buy this Teflon coated yarn from? I buy it via eBay and all you have to do is type in Teflon coated yarn to find it. In fact a new piece arrived this morning. In this clip I've refitted the nuts finger tight but I can't leave them like that. It is really important, firstly, not to over tighten these nuts, that will put too much pressure on the valve spindle and cause friction and possibly scoring of the valve spindle over time. 
and also the pressure that the nuts exert on the gland cover needs to be the same at both sides. It must not be crooked. That's why I'm using a spanner, because you can feel when they're tight enough. Just go back and forth between the two nuts, seeing how tight they are, and when they both get to be quite a snug fit, don't tighten the nuts anymore. The next gland that I'll be packing belongs to the low-pressure cylinder's piston rod. But I won't be doing that in this episode, and probably not even the next one, because I need to sort these eccentrics out. They're just not right, and it's bothering me. This, by the way, is nothing to do with OCD. I don't have that condition, I just like things to be right. I've spread a piece of cloth over the mechanical parts of the engine, because I'm going to do quite a lot of filing using a square file. What I need to do is radius the edges of the valve forks so they slide over the expansion links easily. At the moment everything is too tight, including the clearance between the expansion links and the valve forks. I need to rectify this. You have to be careful doing this for a couple of reasons. One is you don't want to do it wrong and you don't want to stick the needle file into your finger. Believe me, from experience it's very painful. Here I've turned the engine around. This is the high pressure cylinder end. And this valve fork wants a serious amount of filing. Here I'm just demonstrating it. I'm not doing the job just yet. I want to see which expansion link is the tightest. First of all, I'll lubricate the particular points. The worst offender was the valve fork on the low pressure cylinder steam chest. And as you can see now, the assembly is moving far better than it did. This part of the reversing gear, which is the drop arm that carries the reversing screw, has been fitted in the wrong place. That's why you can't wind the engine fully into reverse. And now, because it's held in place with a roll pin, it's very loose indeed. As I mentioned in the last episode, I will be taper reaming this to take a taper pin, but that still doesn't help the fact that it's in the wrong place. I need to make a new reversing screw with a bit more thread on it to compensate for this part being wrong. And thankfully my friend Andrew is an excellent machinist, far better than I am, has said that he will machine me one of these special 20 threads per inch threads. Please take a look at Andrew's YouTube channel, it's well worth a look. Andrew's channel title is on screen at the moment. His channel is called Model Engineering Adventures and I watch it frequently and actually learn things from it, it's good. That's it from me for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.